Hello everyone, hope everybody's doing great today. And uh, this video finds you in high spirits. And uh, today we're gonna be watching, uh, not watching, talk, I'll be talking about Blade of the 47 Ronin. Uh, as this video is being made, it's in the top 10 uh, movies on Netflix. It is a Netflix show, I believe. I believe it is, uh, could be wrong. But anyways, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I feel sorry for all those viewers watching Netflix and maybe this is why a lot of people are leaving Netflix because their movies are not very good. And this is, uh, well, I'll get to that verdict later on. Uh, first off though, I think the creators of this were probably trying to set a Guinness Book of Records for the most uh, CGI blood splatter in a film uh, because there's a lots of blood going everywhere in this show. Um, it's splattering everywhere. It should be called blood sport or something like that. Or, uh, well, that will be a uh, fence to uh, Van Damme's movie Bloodsport, if you call it Bloodsport. Anyways, let's get it. Let's start talking about what this show is really about. Uh, yeah, so the Blade of the 47 Ronin is about a sorcerer, a uh, witch. Uh, but since he's a guy, I guess he would be a warlock. Anyways, he's trying to get both the Witch Blade and the Warrior Blade together so he can have this ultimate power. And I guess to rule the world. I guess that's his ultimate game. Uh, who knows? But he's just trying to get the two blades together uh, so he can be very powerful. Uh, and there's another prophecy where one of the descendants of the 47 Ronin are supposed to be able to... Only they can kill him for some reason. Um, but that was the prophecy of the show. Uh, of Yeah, of the show. Uh, so, <clears throat> sorry. Thank you for bearing with me if you didn't turn it off by now. Uh, so, uh, this show does la lack a lot in, uh, plot and acting. If you've seen, for maybe the one of you who's seen my previous videos, uh, my, uh, acting ability to see if somebody's good or not, I want to see fantastic, great acting and very, very bad acting. And this goes into the very bad acting. Um, there are some highlights. Oh, there's some all right highlights uh what this movie really shines though is the uh action scenes the fighting scenes are very well choreographed if for somebody you don't care about plot don't really care about the acting but you're all in it for like the sword fighting and that kind of stuff and that's your thing this movie is going to be for you uh it does very well on that aspect of the show is the fighting um aspect part um that's where it really shines. And thankfully, there's a lot of it in this show, in this movie. You got a lot of fighting, which is great. And what I like about it is a lot of times in Hollywood, what they want to do is do all the close-up, like where the fist lands. And they want to do all the, yeah, you know, all the close-up shots. Uh, what the director does in this one, uh, what was his name? Ron, oh, I don't remember pronouncing it. Ron Yon, I think. Uh, probably really messed up his last name i apologize for that if you happen to be the director watching this i'm sorry for ruining your name anyways what he does great is that he pulls the camera back lets us see like the, all the action moves and all the fighting stances and the punches are landing and you really get to see like the fight unfold so it's like you're actually watching uh two people fight on there and see well seeing all the action at once which is great i like how they do that um I really don't know anything about the actors that do any research, but uh, I don't know if they have any martial arts background, but you, you would believe it when you're watching this. Uh, that's how well it is done. That's how well it's choreographed. So if you're somebody who likes to fight him, that's for you. Just ignore the plot, ignore the acting. Because, um, you know, like when they talk, like their voices don't really match their emotions. And uh, there's some dev devastating scenes in here, but... You know, the actors are trying to seem sad, but they kind of fail, you know. And it's hard to say a lot of times with the actors when they do a bad job acting, if it's, is it the actors or the director? You know what I mean? Is it the direction that the director is giving these actors on how to act? Um, so, it's, you know, that's kind of, sometimes that's kind of a problem. You have to see a person in like multiple shows to really see if they're a good actor or not. Uh, but the acting is not really good in this um what else is there 
Uh, world building that's not very well explained because you got these people just walking around with some, it's supposed to be like modern day world stuff. And you got people just walking around with blades, you know, summarized like this, strapped on their back, and everybody's acting like it's an everyday thing. Um, don't even get looks, you know, cops, you know, stuff like that. Um, yeah, so the world building could have used a little bit more, I guess. I guess we're just supposed to assume that it's modern day, but. You know, people around them ain't really acting like it's a modern day world type of thing. Um, also, like, uh, where are the cops in this? You know, they're like laying dead bodies everywhere in these buildings, and there's no policemen there to investigate, no nothing like that. So, I'm guessing, you know, the victor of these battles are secretly like removing these bodies and burning them or something. I don't know. Uh, but, um, I'm just going to say, we're going to end it with this. My favorite scene, this is a terrible video, but my favorite scene is probably the subway scene where a guy actually brings a gun to a knife fight. And you see why, uh, and he's just like, he has no problem using it. He's a good guy. And he's like, like, hell, I'm not going to fight these guys in the subway with my sword. So he just starts shooting the bad guys. Um, and he's a good swordsman too, but he's like, no, nah, I'm just going to shoot you guys. Uh, it kind of reminds me of that little Indiana Jones scene where, you know, uh, where there's a lot of Stark where the guy meets the guy and the guy's doing all this sword stuff. And Indiana Jones like, I don't have time for this and just shoots him. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of that. Uh, it's probably about the my favorite part of the movie was probably the subway uh, scene just because of him. Uh, so if you're still sticking around here, appreciate it. Thank you for <laughs> Thank you for hanging out. Uh, seeing the worst review that you've ever seen before uh, on this channel uh, We give you we give these three grades you either get a uh, highly recommend which we believe majority of people is gonna like it Just a recommend which means 50 50 and recommend with caution Which we think is the great majority of the people are not gonna like it uh, So I'm gonna recommend this with caution with lots of caution here uh, If you're somebody who loves fights loves CGI blood going all over the place uh, this is for you. It does some, has some highlights. Uh, it's like the fighting scenes. Uh, the acting does suffer in this one. And it almost feels like a fan-made movie. Uh, nothing against fan-made movies. Uh, just that's how it feels. Uh, but a lot of people are watching it on Netflix. I don't know if they're coming away happy after watching it. But there's a lot of people watching it. Uh, but yeah, if you're somebody who likes action, this is for you. If you want somebody who likes action with a good plot. Uh, you might want to stay with, stay away from this one. Find something else uh, that's similar to this. But as far as my recommend is, recommend this with caution. Lots of caution there. The, another good thing is, is this a dumb movie where it doesn't have nothing to say really. Just a lot of fighting and uh, trying to stop a bad guy from taking over swords. But anyways, have a great day. Bye.